Welcome to the Passive Purpose Interview Show, where we share our unique and universal stories about finding and fulfilling our purpose. My name is Katya Rusanen, and I'm your host and a spiritual mentor. My intention for this show is to inspire you on your path to purpose. Today, I have a pleasure to interview my dear friend, Charles Daniel MacDonald, who is on mission to bring even more light into the fashion industry. Charles has over 22 years of experience within the international fashion scene. So he is the editor in chief, presenter and fashion critic of contemporary fashion publication, Hork Magazine. He presents fashion mode in the primetime fashion show for World Radio Paris, Monaco, which speaks about the contemporary news, views, trends within the European and international fashion scene. So you are here up for a treat. And of course, we talk about fashion, but we okay. talk beyond. So stay tuned and let's find more about his path. So let's get started. And first of all, welcome, Charles. And thank you so much for your willingness to be our guest here today. Oh, thank you so much, Katya. It's always a pleasure. And I, I always tune in to your, your shows and your webinars. So it's, it's a real honor to be connected in to be on one of them and to, to share my journey, how I came from the dark islands of Scotland to the, the, the lighty beaches of Barcelona through the fashion industry. Mm, I, I'm so excited because actually I, we have known through common friends for years, but yes. actually I was like, I don't really know about this story. How did this yeah. all start? Because I just know you are all about the fashion. You are the one to yeah. ask, what's the new upcoming trends? And well, then I'd love to hear a little bit more about your journey. And if I missed anything you want to mention, because I know you do a lot. Okay. So I introduced you very briefly. If there's anything else, that you want to bring forward, please okay. let us know what else do you do? <laughs> I understand. Okay, um, I'm Scottish, I'm 44. I grew up in a small little fishing town called Greenock and it's on the west coast of Scotland. And I did quite well in school and this allowed me to go to Strathclyde University in Glasgow. When I was there, I did a, an honours and a master's degree in building design engineering and civil and structural engineering which is basically architecture and civil engineering together, technical architecture. Um, Glasgow for me was a really good experience. Many people say it's a very hard city, but I found the warmth of the people to make up for the light that the environment did not have. It was very dark, very cold, but mm. the people were very warm, very transparent, very kind, very strong. I studied there for maybe about 10 years and when I graduated, well studied and lived there, when I graduated everyone told me that I have to go to London to develop my career. If you're Scottish, you, it's your right of passage, you have to go to England, you have to go to London. So I went to London and I worked for some top consultancies like Jacobs Babti, I worked for Arup, I worked for WSP and Hyder. But I just felt the whole time in London, I had a good career, I had a partner, but I felt as though something was missing. So I decided to maybe, I was in the city for three years and I felt quite trapped in London as many people can. Mm, Sometimes I get that. <laughs> many people connect, if you live in a large city with many people, you've got many options and you'll be totally free to be sociable, to explore yourself, but to be honest, I find the other way, I find myself becoming increasingly lonely the more people I met. Mm. So I thought, mm, hang on, my, this isn't my journey. I'm not being fulfilled by other people. My job was okay, I was earning good money, but so I spoke to my father very, very candidly and he said, well, you, you've been working and studying since you were 17. You've always spoke about traveling and 
I think I've got romantic blood. I like moving around and meeting people <laughs> and interacting and trying new cultures, trying new languages, trying new foods. I wouldn't go to a shopping centre. I'll go to the mountains. I'll go to hidden points of interest or graveyards that no one would really necessarily seek out to do. I always go for the complete polar opposite. Mm. So I met my friends one night and we had a bottle of wine. And I was discussing, what should I go traveling? Should I go to South America? Should I go to Scandinavia? And we had a globe, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the geography globe. I spun the globe and pointed my finger at stop and I pointed to Spain. Ta -da. Yeah, and I thought, wow, this is, a, okay, Spanish people are wonderful, warm. There's lots of nice energy. About a day or so later, I was deciding what am I going to do in Barcelona or Madrid or Marbella while we're working a bar, a concierge and a nanny. And on Facebook, on the right hand side catcher, I saw an advertisement for Teach English in Barcelona, Tejo. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, okay, this is a real sense of purpose. So I spoke to my friends and my father. And they agreed that was a really good way you're working, but it's in a, a professional company. You've got a profile. You're not just cleaning tables. It's a good way to earn money, to meet people, and to share the, the gift of language. Mm -hmm. So I, I really thought the idea was good. I had the online exam. I, I passed the enrollment. And to cut a long story short, Three months later, I ended up living in Barcelona. And then someone always knows someone who knows someone. A friend of a friend in Barcelona knew a Scottish man who was looking for a flatmate, and I ended up staying in Barcelona. So the next chapter sees me teaching English, being really hard. I really enjoyed the teaching aspect. I'm fluent in English because it's my first language, but it gave me a really good understanding of not only knowing the English language, but how to explain and how to give my gift of language to someone else mm. so we can both communicate. I really enjoyed the, the experience. And then I started doing my, you say in Spanish, autonomo, my own, my own personal company. I was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I really started getting into being interested in fashion because many years ago, I was a model. I was always reading Vogue. I had been to Barcelona Fashion Week as a guest. So I thought it was a good idea to maybe start writing about the fashion industry because I was writing all the time in English about politics, about news. So I thought, OK, I'm going to do a fashion article. And then... I met, we both know, the most wonderful, wonderful lady who started me on my journey to fashion was Francesca Hector. Mm. Francesca, <laughs> uh, one of the main expatriate magazines in Barcelona was called Barcelona Connect. So I wrote an article in fashion, submitted it to her, and several days later, Francesca contacted me to say, I love your style, you've got something different. I'll publish your article, but I also want to meet you because Francesca's like you. She's mm. very open to, to meeting people and she's about different levels of connection. So I met, and as you know, Francesca, she's the most amazing, amazing woman. We, we become an, an instant friendship and she became my mentor. And for the next four or five years, I would contribute to her magazine and the magazine of different associates and friends that she had. She also helped me with my accreditation for um, Barcelona and Paris Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. So that I became more and more involved with fashion and less and less involved with English. And then the day came where I was able to earn not a lot of money, but I was able to earn enough money in fashion than I would have in English. And I crossed the path to become a full-time journalist. So I designed my own WordPress website for the, the English Academy. And I thought, okay, if I design a, an online magazine, then I can use my template and all my existing skills. I can use my transferable skills from English and teaching to make really get the magazine heard and, and to get out there. 
Mm. So I put the magazine together. I was getting more and more work. People were asking me, you write very well. Could we will pay you to do four blogs or one article? And then maybe about three months later, something very fundamental happened. And again, thanks to Francesca. There was a, a radio station, which apparently was in Barcelona all the time, but no one had really heard of it, Barcelona City FM. So Francesca was invited to attend a meeting with a view to having her own show on the radio. But rather than have her show, she took me along and convinced them that I should have my fashion show instead. Um, from then on, I started working on the radio and the show was an immense success. The magazine really took off, Katia. It really, I was speaking like you, very naturally, very organic. I'd have, it was all in English, people coming into the studio. We were sharing stories. I do critiques, but I will never speak negatively because I believe it's bad karma. If you can't say anything positive or constructive, then just don't say anything at all. So I acted as a mentor to some of the fledgling designers, to some of the bloggers, just to share all the, the knowledge and kindness that I had been subjected to. I thought it was my job to pass it on. Mm. So the radio started going very well. And at one point, someone said, if you're a journalist and you like doing presentation and writing, you should get into marketing and PR because the most important thing today is social media, interacting with your, your clients on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, or as we are doing now, live streaming, Facebook streaming, Instagram TV. So again, I went back to study part-time distance learning from Barcelona, and I studied uh, journalism at the London College of Fashion. And then I did marketing and social media at the Regent Academy in London and Central St. Martin's Fashion School by distance. I achieved all my qualifications. And then my story, as you can see, it's totally organic. It's a progression. It, we, we switch different books, but it's all the same chapter. It's all the same theme. Mm. And up to now, uh, I've got four or five clients internationally. And my speciality is social media, but it's storytelling. I take I take the brand and rather than make posts, I turn it into like a daily, daily soap opera involving the actions, the activities, the products, the experience, the accreditation, people they've worked with. Although I'm promoting people's brand, I'm telling a story as to how the brand fits in to the universe on all different levels to inspire and to empower people. And today, that's where I am. Oh, what a journey you have had. Like, thank you yeah. for sharing and like all this, like how, how things happen when there yeah. is flow and willingness. And yeah. one thing that really struck me when you said you are a fashion critic, but you don't say anything negative. Like, no, I don't. I never say anything negative. No, that is huge. And I feel like that is something to really embrace and bring more forward in the industry that is well commonly known for very sometimes very harsh critique um, I, I can tell you something very very surprising and fashion is maybe like the royal family or people that haven't been to university they have a preconceived idea about it but once you're inside you think mm, this isn't what i expected i am um, I work now for World Radio Paris and Monaco um, because when Barcelona City FM closed, I went straight to Paris with my portfolio. So to, to go from Barcelona to, to Paris with the radio for me was very, very important. And I also started meeting some very high profile designers, some I'm not allowed to speak about for confidentiality. But I can tell you, the higher up you go in fashion, the nicer, the kinder, the more open, the more receptive people are. It's the people at the very bottom, the bloggers and the influencers, and there's no disrespect to them in general, but people, people at all levels of fashion should try to be humble, try to be open, try to be transparent. Bear in mind, just because you don't like something doesn't mean that you can develop a different angle to sell to the world, to sell to the nation, because 
you're taking someone's product, someone's dream, someone's inspiration and someone's investment and you're putting your words to try and sell that product. For you to be detrimental is just very bad karma. If you can't find good words as a journalist to describe something, then you're not a very good journalist. Mm. And I love that, like the thinking that piece of fashion was somebody's dream. Yeah. They put their heart and soul into it when they were creating it. Yeah. And it just might not please your eye, but they created that thing with love. And yeah. I think Fashion, for me, depending on, you have ready to wear, you have demi couture, you have haute couture, you have cruise collection, you've got fast fashion like Primark, that's totally different. Then in these days, at, at the correct level, is wearable art because you're wearing the current trends, styles, slogans, you're wearing the current style. Now the style might be gender neutral or gender fluid. Maybe you've got haute couture, but... Fashion is basically a, a mix mag and a, a jigsaw of styles, inspirations, and prices. You just have to find the exact style that suits you. Yeah, exactly. And we all have our unique ways to see that too. So it is allowing things to be and then finding and choosing what you like. And then if it's not for you, it's not for you. So. I think as well, Katja, it's very important. Um, the clothes you wear say a lot about your energy and your personality. So if I'm, when I'm doing critiquing and cool hunting and street style, I can walk down the street and very often I'll, I'll see people wearing completely different outfits and I'll try to gauge from the outfit the person's wearing what their personality's like. Mm. Uh, it was the local Starbucks cafe. And there was this amazing older woman. She had on a lilac top and glasses and beads. And I thought, I bet she's got a really nice outgoing personality. I bet she's very bohemian. And I stood behind her. She asked me where the sugar was. We engaged in a conversation with the, the whole social distancing. And she was wonderful. It turned out she was an artist. It turned out that she had lived in Denmark, I think it was. Mm. And she had been to Scotland when she was younger. So... You can tell a lot about people by the way they dress. Mm, yeah, the, because the personality, that's one way for us to express and bring forward how we want to, what we want to say. Mm -hmm. to the world. So that's, that's so fascinating also to see different ways. And we always can learn from others and take inspiration. Exactly. And one of the things I want to, like, talking about inspiration, like this magazine that you started. Mm -hmm. So what was the inspiration? I know the journey, like, okay, it kind of happened. Yeah. <laughs> like Organically, so, yeah, yeah. But what was there? Because did you just wake up one morning and like, hey, I'm going to start a magazine? Or what was the inspiration? What is your vision for the magazine? Well, my vision was, um, I had always worked in fashion when I was younger because, oh gosh, many years ago. Um, we don't count. <laughs> 26 years ago, I was a model. Um, and I worked sometimes in London and Paris and I was in agencies. It was way before Instagram. I used to go around with, you used to get calls from the morning to your castings with a fax. You had, you had to take your portfolio with you, which was like a phone book. So it was totally, totally different. The reason I ignited my interest in fashion, but on a completely different level, was due to the written language in English. I was preparing blogs and articles for business English, and it was to motivate students. And one day a student said to me, is it true you used to be a model? Why don't you give us a class on fashion? I thought, wow, okay, teaching fashion? Well, why not? I can teach English and I know about fashion. Uh, we did a, we watched the video, the September issue with Vogue and Anna Winter. It was the documentary, it's quite famous. Then the students did a report and the next, one of the, the students said over the weekend, could we do a, for homework, could we do an article on style or our favourite types of clothing? I said, okay, yeah, I'll do one also and I'll show you how to do the grammar and the layout and then we can all have a workshop in. Mm. So with this in mind, I 
I started doing fashion blogging um, and I submitted articles to Francesca, our very good friend. And um, my other friend who's the photographer said, listen, go on to blogger.com, put your articles on a blog. I thought, wow, yeah, everyone's doing blogging. I had a blog for the Academy. Okay, I'm going to call the the magazine, the, the, I'm going to call the blog Fashion Force, F-O-R-C. So mm -hmm. F-O-R-C, Sedila, it's Latin. F-O-R-C means force in Latin. Mm -hmm. So from Fashion Force, it came to me, force, the power of fashion. Then the blog still became real successful. The blog is still running, and it's called fashionforce.com. It's been running for well over nine years now. Wow, I love that. The power yeah. of fashion. Force, El Porte de la Moda, Force magazine, yeah. And curiously, the domain name and all the social medias were available. So our friend said to me, take your blog and work this into a magazine. That way you can promote the blog and you can promote the radio and all your experiences and all your fashion shows and all your videos and contacts in one local spot. Mm. So I set up the WordPress site and it was very, very easy to do. And I had all my nice content. I had lots of images from all the different fashion weeks. And I already had the brand. I had an idea of how to do it. I had the content. I was just really putting everything together, all the articles, making it look pretty, getting all my social media properly contented, getting people to like me, getting people to speak to me. and. It was through a combination of these skill sets and these templates plus the radio that really organically drove me to have a sustainable fashion brand. Mm. And I love that, like things coming together when yeah. we are on the path. Yes. And now I'd love to ask from your experience, because you have shared how you got started. And there is most likely a lot of learning on that journey too. Mm -hmm. So if there is somebody who has a dream, like, okay, I do have a message and I love the idea to one day have this online magazine. So what could be some things to keep in mind or mm -hmm. help them to get started? Yeah, I am. Um, I cannot, Katia, remember that the inspiration I got from this gentleman, I think it was maybe a, maybe a, a Buddhism or an alternative methodologies page on on Facebook and I think there's a book about it as well and it's called very simply write it down and make it happen <laughs> so many people have ideas if I have an idea I've got an iPad and I've got Microsoft Word and Excel no get a piece of paper or you know the, the binders when we set out a timeline and day one choose a domain name to day week one choose a template week two set up instagram a thousand mile journey starts with a single footstep mm. so go back to basics everyone can get lost in the digital world if you've got something you can see and touch it will have more value you'll realize the value of it this is why there's so much problems today with people and credit they don't realize the value of money because they don't touch it they don't hand over this piece of paper that they've worked maybe two hours for in exchange for a product. It's now a piece of plastic. So they don't realize the importance of traditional values in the modern world. With regards to business management and marketing, I went straight back to the fundamentals. And rather than ha having to set a magazine up within one month, I had the most perfect hobby which was a 30 stage plan over one year. So I very organically worked on it. I investigated before I go to bed, okay, I'm going to see who's got the best Instagram profile. I'm going to look at the top 10 tips for Google business. I'm going to work out how to use Facebook Live. So eventually it wasn't a product, it was a process. And regardless of how tired I was, if I had to do a a 500 word article one week and I was having a really bad week, I would make sure that, okay, I didn't do the article, but I'm going to set aside 10 articles that I'm going to take examples from and I'm going to uh, Photoshop or I'm going to choose one image. If you're feeling really tired or really down because you can't perform a mammoth task, 
rather than perform 100% of it, perform five and come back. And regardless of how badly you felt that day, you can always look back and see, I had a really bad day. I didn't do a thousand words, but I've done a 50 word introduction and I'm good to go next week. Yeah, I love that. Like do something. Do like, something. Exactly. Like get started. And I love how you made it like, okay, decide this one. Then next yeah. week, decide this one. Because that will make all those little steps will count. And one day you're going to be like, you are now like, hey, I have created this magazine. Yeah. It's been going for years now. It yes. has followers. It has really valuable content. And that is a way to bring forward a new message, a different approach, bring more light into the fashion industry. Yes. And also sharing with people this light through the work that you yes. have, like how people can find out more about your work, how they can reach out to you, what is the best way for them to do so? Okay. Well, um, if anyone out there would like the opportunity to send me a proposal, then send me a title or a headline with a 75 word description. I'll have a, a read through some of the, the best ones and I'll get back to you to see if you could be provide me with a publishable article. It can oh. be anything. It could be on it could be on street style. Uh, it could be on the ethics of fashion. It could be on cool hunting. It could be on life in fashion and the best clothes for meditation. It could be clothes for channeling light and your Instagram picture. Uh, of your brand or your product to your business then i'll put it on my instagram account for one month wow that's amazing that's really so kind of you and very yeah. helpful for people to get their messages out so thank you for that and okay. I'm even even if you don't have time to get 20 or 30 messages or 100 words just start slowly just start off with one or five ten words Start off with a title or an introduction, start off with one picture, but whatever you do, do something. Yeah, do something. And do something. Do connect and follow Charles. I put all your deeds, contact details to the description below. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here today and sharing. It's always my pleasure. Life and sharing your journey and now we are coming towards the end i just want to ask if there is any special message that you want to share before we wrap up mm. yeah I, I think i'd like to share two things i was thinking about this um sometimes i, I felt very lonely you know before walking through the streets when i arrived and i had no friends and I've heard the same from so many friends who had good times in their life and bad times in their life. I, I don't know if it's because of my energy or because I'm friendly, but I find I get so much love and I get so much inspiration and I feel so much tenderness from the presence and the interaction with animals, mm. cats and dogs especially. So for me in my day-to-day -day life when I'm walking or taking the metro, I find it very important every day to interact with a cat or a dog or an animal to, even though we don't understand what each other's saying, but this is about energy, this is about connection, it's about the softness of touch, it's about the softness of your voice. It's a, it's a mutual respect and it's a transfer of non-verbal love. Mm, My other message would be, um, if you can do anything, have courage and be kind yes have courage and be kind and thank have you for bringing also forward those four-legged friends that we have cats and dogs and all animals because they are such a beautiful teachers and support on our journey here you certainly are yeah so i have my own story which i share later on <laughs> but, oh yeah please yeah. please tell me when you're going to share the story i'd love to hear yeah i do have like Definitely my dog was my teacher, so that oh. I have experienced what you were sharing about the animals, the connection and the light that can come from that connection. So thank you for bringing oh, that. Thank you as well. 
forward to. And I just thank you so much for being here and sharing your journey, sharing how things can happen. Like when you have the willingness, when you have the willingness, okay, show me world, where should I go? Yeah. <laughs> it was so, the classic thing like, okay, let's take yeah. it. And like, oh, I'm going to move here. And then following up also that. And that's the thing I get from you today. Like decide and do it. Like however big, however small step that will be, but do something. And exactly. that will move things forward. Exactly, yes. And thank you, thank you, thank oh, you. Thank you so much. It's always lovely. And I'm so honored to be a part of your show today. I'm normally watching other people and taking inspiration. Last week's show on the, the digital marketing and how to promote your brand and your personality, that was wonderful. And of course, all your white messages and your light work and your cards have been, have been really, really inspirational to me. Really. Oh, thank you. It's my honor to do here and serve. And thank you for watching this. And if you want more support on your path, you can also join Light Workers Who Succeed on Purpose Facebook group where okay. a lot of support and extra things are happening and i'm sending all of you loads of light and love and stay well and stay tuned and you can subscribe to this channel to find out when the next episode is up and you can also go back and check my previous episode where i talked about human potential with my guests so so take you take care and thank you bye for now